I do, I do want to ask you a couple of things. I know we're running out of time, brother. Uh, uh, this, uh, you talk about these uh, uh, things in your, in your documentary and, and the show uh, that I do here is the deep cut. And sometimes you get in deep on people's yeah, journeys ahead. and stuff. Yeah. And you talk about your panic attacks and the mental yes. health stuff. And you went to say, can you talk a little, cause some of our fans <clears throat> yes. can relate to your story in that they are persevering and fighting to achieve what they want to achieve fighting to achieve their dreams, but they might also have a connection to some of yeah. the mental health aspects that come yes. along with that. What are the things that occurred to you when you were aware of them? Like, how was this whole journey for you through the many decades that you've it, uh, dealt with it? I, I, it was like, I was, it was a summer of 1969. Mm -hmm. I was over some people's house and I walked home and I was like in a nightmare. I was having, I didn't know, no, I, it was, I guess it was a panic attack. Yeah. It's like, I was never so frightened in my life. I was scared to death. I said, what's, I felt like I was possessed or like I was the devil wow. having all these horrible thoughts. Oh my God. I, I sleep in my house, like covered up. It was the worst thing. So all of a sudden I figured I woke up. It was there. It was there for a few years. Wow. Every waking second i was there even though i looked normal i was yeah. like I felt a part of me was dying and actually i wanted to die i actually said you know i don't really care if i die right now right i said you know what? i'm going to just go out in the mountains with a bowie knife and hunt my own food and if i freeze to death i don't care it's right. better than this so my i was really going it was horrible i mean it was you know if anyone's had panic attacks or anxiety attacks I have. it's not you have it's yes. not so much the attack it's the oncoming of the fear of having it yep and i walked around i said how am i ever gonna yeah, i would yeah. drive in the car but just crying by mm -hmm. myself i was a kid i was 19 20 years old yeah and i didn't know what it was i said what did i do am i being punished what did i do am i possessed by a devil people go oh we'll drink a warm glass of milk i no. <laughs> Okay, you know, I mean, that's no. yeah, yeah, put some Vaseline, you know, yeah. put some, uh, you know, Vicks vapor rub on your chest. Yeah, you know, I didn't because, eat something spicy, I'm having a panic attack. Yes, right. a difference. Yeah, and I was ashamed of myself because I didn't know how to talk to anybody, like, right? I was having right. these horrible thoughts of violence and this, and, the, right. and everything scared me, and I was afraid to be alone with people, and it was horrible. So right. then I tried, you know, someone said, uh, well, try one of these. My mother was always on my like, stupid pills or something like this <laughs> for Angus in the 60s. Nothing helped. Right. Nothing helped. And then I was going through it. The only thing that saved my life was music. When yeah. I was on stage and when I was rehearsing, I was fine. When I was by myself, or which I was a lot, it was unbearable. It was the yeah. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. So it's it was terrible. like a it's terrible. paralyzing, right? Terrible. Yeah, yeah. Paralyzing. And yeah. the girl that I was living with, the older girl, she was so wonderful. Probably because she was older. Yes. And she She'd was, been through the wars of her life. She understood. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, was yeah. Positive and she yeah. was great. And she I said, and I would sit there, I would actually lay down in a fetal position. Uh, mm -hmm. it was that bad. Yeah. So once my manager had to call my brother, my brother had just done Rocky. Wow. And he made some money. He said, Frank's not doing good, man. Yeah. This is this is bad. I'm worried about it. So I went to see, you know, these self-help people. I, I knew something was wrong. Right. So right. I would do anything. I mean, I was doing yoga. I was doing I was doing anything just to get me through. So I went to the carrier. My brother said, Oh God, he got all frightened because yeah. it's my brother, you know. Right, of course. He loves you. Yeah. And he gave the money to my manager to send me to the carrier clinic, which was not a, not a crazy place, yeah. but they were doing experiments with biofeedback, which was in its early stages. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they put me on lithium. Uh -huh. Okay. And I took it and all of a sudden I became normalized. I would go to this place and, and God rest his soul. Dale Patterson was the analyst. He wasn't that much older than me, but mm -hmm. He was great and, and he passed away. He was a great guy. Mm -hmm. And I'd sit there, I said, I just don't know what to do, man. I just don't know. I pray to God, I said, I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm going crazy and I've never hurt anybody. I don't know why. why right, not? right. So we did this thing. So it was a bit of reprogramming and I was on the lithium. 
I think between that and maybe maturing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it kind of subsided. Yeah. Kind of went away. He goes, you know what? If you can just look at it, if you can get outside some look at it, it's a pan- it's going to go away. You're not going to do this. You're not going to jump off right. the bridge. You're not going to do the. It's the fear of it. Mm-hmm. And so I was on the lithium and like me being an idiot, I didn't know you had to get your blood checked and everything on lithium. So I was taking it every day for years. And one day I just stopped. And the guy goes, you just stopped? How are you? He goes, I'm fine. He yeah. goes, no, you got to wean yourself off and take blood work and all that. That was like an idiot, right? So <laughs> with that stuff, and then, you know, they didn't, I wish they would have had Xanax back then because that's what it's for. Right, right. So, you know, and I don't really, I mean, a thing of Xanax will last me a year and a half. I mean, oh, I just right. take it, you know, you might have a hangover, you're a little edgy the next day. Right. Take a half of a Xanax. But if people are out there, just understand it will hopefully go away. Don't try to suppress it. You know, just yeah. get help. I mean, if you feel bad, there's so many outlets. If there was no outlets then, right? There, I, you know, I, I was ashamed of myself. I was ashamed to talk about because I said, yeah. "Oh, he's crazy, man. Let's get away from him." Yeah. So, which made it more compound. But I, from the grace of God and the help from my brother and my friends, I, you know, I, I felt I've been feeling pretty good. Like, That's good. I mean, and I've gone through some gnarly stuff. I'm sure. And but the, you know, there, there's, you know, faith in God, faith, belief, and just yeah. ask for help. You know, I've had a few friends of mine, my best friends. One took his life. I said I just he hung himself. My mm-hmm. best friend. Wow. And I, I never saw it coming. Yeah. Why didn't you just call me, man? Right. But you know what? People are ashamed of Mm -hmm. themselves and they don't want to ask because they've shut. It's not weakness, man. No. Because you can't take that stuff back. No, it's true. You know, I I, I battled with it uh, in 2016 really severely for about five months. Deepest of depressions where it was every day the uh, pondering how I was going to take my own life. And I do three hours of meditation just to climb out of it every day. And so, uh, so the panic attack stuff is residue, occasional residue, but I didn't know what this was until it started happening. And then when you do, and you're so right to give this advice, remember that you will get through it, whatever you need to do to settle yourself and stay and just ride it out and try to, you know, kind of remove yourself a little bit, understand that it's happening. Don't yeah. resist it because that'll consume you even more. And, and there's you just millions ride of it people out. that yeah. suffer from millions yeah. of people that yeah. suffer from it. Yeah. So understand one thing, you're not alone. Yeah. And one of the great things is group therapy. I, I suggest oh, wow. it to anybody because you know what? <laughs> My stepfather, one of the maybe only poignant thing he ever said was, <laughs> if you went to group therapy, and everyone threw their problems in a pile. An hour later, you take back your own problems. If you think you're crazy, <laughs> yeah. listen to other people. I married my Dalmatian. I mean, you, so you think you're crazy. Yeah. You know, it's other people, but you're not crazy. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. some people are a little oversensitive to it, but they're things. And, uh, you know, in 1960s, unfortunately, no one knew about it. They right. didn't address it. And it, like they didn't address post-traumatic stress disorder. And remember, right. I got drafted in 1969 yeah. going through this. So right. me going down to the draft board, mm. uh, going in deduction to go serve. But I mean, I, was, I wasn't a coward. I went to military right. school, but I was like freaked out. I said, I, don't, I just don't know if I'm right. ready for this, man. I mean, to be dropped off into rice paddy with Oof. what I was going through. Yeah. And so, but I mean, I, I did, I went through my induction. I was one a, and maybe through the grace of God, because I had a lot of friends that came out really bad yeah. out of Vietnam. Yeah. And I would have been one of those guys, but uh, for the grace of God, I think God saved me for something else. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I believe it was this, because, mm-hmm. you know, I, I believe in the veterans. I believe in taking care of people like this. Yeah. So I guess I was saved for another thing. Cause there would be, maybe be no, Stallone Frank there is. Yeah.